Christmas. For some people, it's a religious holiday. For many people, it's more of a secular holiday that has some spiritual overtones. And for lots of people, it's a retail holiday. And that retail holiday has really shaped a lot about how we celebrate Christmas today. But I want to step back from that retail frenzy and talk more about Christmas as a holiday, a holiday that's really celebrated around the world. Christmas is a holiday that we look forward to, that we plan for. There are parties, there are decorations, there are gatherings with families and friends, and a lot goes into it. Christmas, our imagery is ancient in many ways. We, we tr decorate our homes with lights, which is reminiscent of old, old ancient uh, winter solstice celebrations from the pre-Christian era. Also from the pre-Christian era are our Christmas trees, bringing trees in our home as a way of preserving life through the winter months. All these symbols have different kinds of meaning for us but they're part of how we celebrate Christmas. We think of Christmases past with fond memories. We look to Christmases in the future. And, and we look forward in sharing what we do with our families and friends and loved ones at each Christmas time. But this Christmas is unique. And we're living as a second year, a second Christmas in the pandemic. And I think because of that, it's worth our while to look a little more closely at the Christmas story. And it doesn't really matter if you're Christian or not Christian or whether you believe this story is true or not. But I think that there are pieces of this story that will help us try to make sense of some of the difficult times we have gone through through this pandemic because in this pandemic, we've had a lot of pain and hardship. And that's really the story of the first Christmas. You know, it begins right off with a teenage girl who somehow turns out to be pregnant. Nobody really knows how. And the man she's engaged to, well, he knows it's not his kid. And what's the family gonna do? Now, in that culture, this teenage pregnant girl should have been killed. I mean, that was the solution in that culture. But that's not what her family wanted to do. So they sent her out of town to be with relatives to keep her safe and negotiated apparently with the engaged uh, husband-to-be who agreed to marry her. So he took her as his wife and then sort of bizarrely right off there on a trip and they're on this trip traveling mostly by foot. They have a donkey, but they're going from the small town they live in to a larger city. And it's a hardship for her to travel in her th third trimester. And they get there and, you know, because they're poor, there's no place to stay. So they end up in a cave where the farm animals are. And no sooner do they get to the cave when she goes into labor and is apparently delivering this child on her own. This had to be a horrible traumatic experience to go through all of these twists and turns. But then the story gets even more bizarre. Right after the child is born, the first visitors to show up are shepherds. Now we have these prosaic images of shepherds, but the reality of, of being a shepherd 2000 years ago these were folks who didn't have a lot of skill, who lived with the sheep and stayed awake overnight watching the sheep. They smelled like the sheep. And to keep warm, they probably had a few bottles of homebrew. So they showed up dirty and stinky and maybe a little tipsy. And they tell this young family, we got a message from the sky. Your child is going to be very special. Well, what do you make of that? And then the next visitors on the scene are astrologers, probably from Persia. We traditionally think that there are three of them, but the Bible doesn't really say. We're not sure how many showed up, but they brought three gifts. And one of the gifts was spice to embalm a dead body. 
for a baby. Wow, that's a weird gift. And as if the gift wasn't weird enough, they tell this family that the king is going to try to kill their child. So the family decides that their best course of action is to become political refugees and escape into Egypt. This is a story of hardship. This is a story of living on the edge. This is a story of one bad thing happening after another. This is a story of you didn't think it was going to get worse, but guess what? It did. That's the story of the first Christmas. We've put all kinds of glitter and tinsel on it, so we think it's really a pretty story. But pay attention to the details. It's not a pretty story. It's a story of hardship. I think it's important for us to pay attention to it as a story of hardship because we've experienced hardship. Millions of people have died around the world because of COVID-19. We don't talk about it. We just watch statistics. But those were very real people, people who were loved, part of families who were lost. Other people have suffered greatly and have experienced financial hardship because of their illnesses. People have lost jobs, they've been sick, schools have been disrupted. The rates of depression and anxiety have increased. The rates of overdose of drugs have increased. It's clear that there's a great deal of pain from living in this pandemic. So what are we going to do? We keep talking as if we're going to get back to normal, to the way things were before the pandemic. And I'm sorry, I really don't think we're going back to the way things were before the pandemic. We've lost too much. Our lives have been disrupted too much. And we keep seeing in the statistics, even with vaccines, even with treatments, that the infection rate begins to go down and then it begins to go up again. So this pandemic is not over. It isn't even really well managed. So our pain and suffering will continue because of the pandemic. So do we give up? Do we stop living? Or do we learn from the Christmas story that even in the face of hardship, people find a way to continue. They choose life, they choose to live, they find hope, they open themselves to a better tomorrow and believe that it can happen even when one calamity after another happens. My friends, the heart of the Christmas story is to look for possibility, to believe that there's a positive future, to believe that hope is coming again into our lives, that there's a reason to keep moving forward. That, my friends, is the heart of Christmas. And so this Christmas, my hope for you is that you open yourself to look forward in positive ways, to believe that there's something good coming for you, your family, your loved ones, and to continue to move towards that goodness, despite the circumstances around us, because those circumstances don't determine us. That's part of what we learned from the Christmas story. Thanks for your time. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell, make some comments, share the video, and most importantly, have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you.